Lead Like Me. Nu følger vi den nervepirrende kamp ved det grønne bord på World Poker Tour. TV2 Zulu og Pokershop.dk præsenterer World Poker Tour. The crowd loves it. Yes, they do. Welcome to the World Poker Tour as we arrive at our final destination, the incomparable Bellagio in Las Vegas for the ultimate poker championship as these six superstars of poker will battle for one of the largest prize pools ever, a massive multi-million dollar jackpot. The great American card game has finally found a home. Welcome to the World Poker Tour Championship. Poker Tour travels the world featuring some of the finest in international poker tournaments with the largest payouts ever seen. Tonight, we land at the Bellagio in Las Vegas, home of world-class poker and host of the WPT Championship. Join us as we present the most exciting poker tournament in history as heavyweights of the poker world compete for the pinnacle of prize pools worth almost 2.7 million in cash. At the start of this event, 111 hopefuls, including every WPT champion from this year's tournaments, risked 25 grand to stake claim to only six spots at the final championship table. By the end of the night, only one winner will take his place in the history books, walking away with over a million bucks in cash, joining an elite group of legends of the poker world. Now, down to the WPT arena, where poker master Mike Sexton and Hollywood home game guru Vince Van Patten are standing by. Hi everyone, welcome to the World Poker Tour. I'm Mike Sexton along with Vince Van Patten and we are at the beautiful Bellagio in Las Vegas, Nevada for the championship event on the World Poker Tour. And Vince, this is an historical day in the poker world and I can tell you there's more electricity in this room right now than there is at Hoover Dam. Well, I'll tell you something, Mike. It has been an honor and a thrill to be a part of the World Poker Tour's first season. We went through 12 different tournaments. We traveled the globe. We had a great time. I lost a lot of money in a lot of different casinos. <laughs> so it has been an absolute thrill. Let's talk about this tournament. It's very exciting. 111 players entered the tournament. They all had to put up $25,000 each. The winner of this tournament will make over a million dollars and will become a true legend in the world of poker. Well, Vince, we have a true legend here tonight playing with us, and these other guys are going to try to become one. That's right. In fact, we have everything you could ever want at a final table. We've got the Jack Nicklaus Arnold Palmer of the poker world versus the Tiger Woods of poker. We've got the high-stakes cash game players versus the occasional tournament player. We've got pro versus amateur, age versus youth, America versus Russia. And Vince, we got the gunslinging, firing, ramming, jamming players against the conservative players. It's going to be exciting. Well, we're down to our final six players. And let me tell you, these guys are what's left of the true best of the best. Let's talk about the lineup. First chip position leader right now, Alan Gehring. He's got $2.6 million in chips He's from New York. Wait till you see him play. Alan Gehring plays the majors, but he has never won a poker tournament. Is this going to be the day for Alan Gehring where he finally breaks through? Well, that's in second chip position is Kirill Gerasimov from Moscow, Russia. Now, Kirill's starting out today with 784000 in chips. Although he's only been playing poker two years, he won the European Heads Up title last year. And Vince, a lot of Europeans I talk to, they like this kid's chances. In third chip position is a man you've seen on the World Poker Tour before, called him the Tiger Woods of Poker, Phil Ivey. He's made the final table. He is a great player to watch. He's a young superstar poker player. And Phil's got $637,000 worth of chips. You're right, Vance. Phil is a superstar, and it's the third final table he's made on the World Poker Tour. Right. In fourth chip position is James Hopner. James is a CPA who lives right here in Las Vegas, Nevada. James is pretty familiar with tournament poker because he plays the circuit on a regular basis. James last year won the $5,000 No Limit Hold'em Championship event at the Legends of Poker, so he's got a pretty good chance today. Okay, in the fifth chip position, and very, very exciting to have him here on the World Poker Tour. 
Texas Doyle Brunson has made the final tables, ladies and gentlemen. This is a poker god. We're going to watch him play, and he's got 522,000 worth of chips. It is so exciting to see Doyle at this final table, and I can tell you he will be the crowd favorite today. Absolutely. In sixth chip position is Ted Forrest. Now, Ted is a mini legend in the poker world, and that he plays in ultra-high-stakes cash games all the time. He's going to be a definite threat. Him and his idol Doyle Brunson, these guys are a gambler's gambler. They bet on everything. Okay, let's shuffle up a deal. Well, Mike, this is exciting. This is a superstar lineup. They're about to begin, so let's join them. Well, once again, we're going to play No Limit Hold'em. The blinds at this point are 15 and 30,000. Blinds, of course, are force bets you have to put up before you look at your cards. And here we go, Mike. It's going to be on Ted Forrest to act first. He's got queen three. Ted Forrest, a rambling gamble, is going to fold. Alan Gehring with 6-5 is not going to play. James Hepner with a deuce six is not going to play. And here comes Doyle Bunsen picking up ace queen, raising the first pot. A nice hand to get started. Man, Doyle Brunson, the godfather of poker, is raising with ace queen. Right next to him, Phil Ivey throwing away a king nine. Well, that's the real beauty of the World Poker Tour, is that we actually get to see these players down cards. That's the audience actually gets to pretend like they're sitting in that seat. What would they do? How would they bet? Well, you get into the minds and the souls of these players, and that's what's terrific. The kid from Moscow, Karel Gerasimov, he looks at a four ace. I was wondering, is Doyle trying to steal the first pot here? He has an ace high. He's he, not going to play it. He opts to fold. And Texas Dolly smiles and picks up the first pot. Doyle Brunson. Oh, man. Legendary Hall of Fame poker player. The guy who wrote the book considered to be the Bible of the poker. He takes down the first pot, and it's always good to get one under your belt, Vince. Well, I'll tell you something. When the godfather bets, he gets respect. <laughs> and he had a real hand that time. He had ace queen. I used to play a very aggressive style. I had to just completely stop it because I, people always thought I was bluffing and they were calling me. I had to turn around and start playing good hands. Well, as Doyle gets off on the right foot here, let's explain to everybody events exactly what a tournament is and how it works. Everybody starts with an equal number of chips. Well, you're right, Mike. You play until you go broke. As soon as you go broke, you get up and you leave, and we're down to six players. <laughs> And that's why some players have more chips than others. As they accumulate chips throughout the week and players get broke, some player stacks continue to rise. And that's why some players have more chips than others. Don't forget, no limit hold them. You can bet anything you want at any time. Action's going to be on Phil Ivey this time. The young superstar poker player has six three of clubs. He's not going to play it. Back to the young Russian, Corell. Well, now, my European friends, they like this kid's chances to win this tournament, Vince. They think he's got a real shot. They love the way he plays. Correll looks at a junk hand 310. He's not going to play that either. Ted Forrest looks at a deuce 8 offsuit. Very bad hand. But look at this, Vince. Oh, man, an abysmal hand, and he's going to raise it. He talk about aggressive play. Allen's quickly calling with king-queen. Well, I'm surprised he just called with it and didn't re-raise him. James Hepner, the CPA, going out with 6-7. Look at this. Doyle did not look at his cards until it was up to his turn. He watched everybody else and watched the reaction of how they played it before he looked at his cards. Then he finally looked at his cards as a poker professional doing his thing. And we're going to see a flop here. Ted Forrest and Alan Gehring in this pot. Remember, Ted's on a stone bluff here with a deuce eight off suit. Well, Ted's got a little piece of it. He's got a little pair of deuces, and he's going to come out and bet. Leads out and bets 90,000 into the chip leader. The chip leader quickly calls with just king high. An amazing call right here by That's Allen. very interesting. I don't know what he's doing. Well, I'll tell you what he's doing. He's going to wait and see what happens on 4th Street. He's going to try to catch something. Well, here it comes. Or in case Ted checks it on 4th Street, I think he's going to try to take the pot away. Look at this. No hesitation. Ted's coming out and swinging again. Ted is not checking. He's firing out again. 90,000. Now, folks, this is bold poker you are watching right here. Remember now, he raised before the flop, he got called. He bet on the flop, he got called. He is now betting two deuces, another 90,000. And he gets Allen to lay this hand down. What play by Ted Forrest right there. Now, it's a nice, strong play by Ted. This guy knows how to play No Limit Hold'em. And for those who may not be familiar with No Limit Hold'em, here's a quick tutorial on how to play the game. The game is No Limit Hold'em, the Cadillac of poker. 
It's a game that takes a minute to learn and a lifetime to master. To start, each player is dealt two cards face down. Then, five community cards, cards everyone can play, are placed face up on the table. Each player combines their two hidden down cards with the community cards to make their best five card poker hand. And betting is really what this game is all about. Let me explain. You get your first two cards, you make a bet. Then the dealer puts the first three community cards on the table. In poker we call this the flop. They bet again. Then the dealer puts the fourth community card on the table. This is called the turn card. Once again, big round of betting. Then the last card. We call this the river. It's turned up on the table. They make a big last round of betting. Turn your cards over. You see who wins. They call it no limit holding because there's no limit on how much a player can bet. At any moment, he can declare that he is all in and push all of his chips into the pot. Right, and that makes chip position, or how many chips you have, very, very important in this game. Back on the action on the young Russian Kirill. He's got a 9-4. He's not going to play, Mike. Kirill holds. Our man Ted Forrest has got 9-jack. Let's see what he does here. He is raising again. Oh, That's, man, I love this guy. He is playing aggressive poker, and he wants it to be known he's going to be the table captain. Allen's going out. James Hepner out with 9-4. The Doyle Brunson's got a 4-5. He's not going to play it. How can he push the great Phil Ivey out of this hand? Phil's got a 7 of spades. Very strong hand, six-handed. Now, he is well aware that Ted Forrest is a very aggressive player. He's calling him here with the a 7 of spades. Very casually calling. We have a two-way pot between two megastars in the poker world, Ted Forrest and Phil Ivey. Here's the flop. Flop is ace-8-4. Well, that's helped Phil Ivey's hit a pair of aces, and he's going to check it, Mike. Ted's going to swing and bet. Well, when you raise before the flop, you usually bet on the flop, and Ted's doing it one more time. 100,000 he bets. And look at this. This is beautiful. Phil taking his time. Knows he has the pair of aces. We know he's got him beat at this point. As we get to see the cards. This is one thing I love about Phil Ivey's play. He's very deliberate in every bet and call and raise that he makes. He doesn't do anything rash. Nothing hasty. Takes his time on every play. It's a good lesson for our viewers to watch. Watch this guy play. Now he's just going to reluctantly call here. Supposedly. And we're going to see the fourth card. Ted Forrest sick about that call, by the way. Here comes 4th Street. Well, the 7 comes off. Now this gives Phil Ivey aces and 7s, two pair. Oh, man, he's got a monster. He's got aces and 7, and he slowly checks it. Look at this. He's setting up the trap. He's dug the hole, and he's putting some twigs on top of it. Now notice that Ted Forrest has made a straight draw. If a 10 would come up, he'd have the best hand this is possible. True. Here comes the last card. And it's a queen. And look how casual Phil Ivey is. Look at his eyes. He just keeps darting them around. Ted didn't hit. All Phil has to do is sneeze on this pot. He's going to take it. He's going to come out and bet. He's betting 150000 it looks like. Of course, Ted can't call. He quickly folds. That's going to do it. A little poker exhibition by Phil Ivey there. Give Ted credit. He maintained his aggressive status, raised before the flop, bet on the flop with nothing. But once Phil Ivey called him, notice he put the brakes on. He went back into the caution mode again. Well, somebody finally slapped Ted Forrest's wrist. You can't push around Phil Ivey for too long. We've seen him on the World Poker Tour before. We've seen him at more final tables on the World Poker Tour than any other player. That's right. This Three. is his third time. Today's going to be very challenging. One guy has 2.5 million in chips. And somehow, I'm, I'm going to have to try and figure out a way to get him. Now, Mike, are you surprised that Gus Hansen and Howard Letterer, players that each won two events on the World Poker Tour, didn't make this final table? Well, Vance, believe me, it is tough to make the final tables on these WPT events. Shauna Hyatt covered the early round action, as well as how all this season's WPT winners fared. Shauna? There were 12 tournaments and 12 winners on the WPT this season. And as hard as it is to win a WPT event, 
it turns out it's even harder to win a seat at this championship table. The lucky chance is Paul Dart, Foxwood, Howard Lever, from the Gold Strike Horseshoe and Tunica, David Devil P. Solius. 111 of the greatest names in poker began a five-day high-stakes shootout that promised glory for one and guaranteed heartache for the rest. There are all the best players here in the world. Almost every player here is a champion. It's going to be the toughest tournament ever. Tough ain't the word for the field today. Shuffle up and deal. Day one ended with 100 players left and two-time WPT finalist Phil Ivey atop the leaderboard. So this is the one I want to win. The luck of the draw on day two brought together a table with so much firepower, even the other players couldn't help but marvel. <laughs> That's the most exciting thing I've ever seen in poker, I swear. But this day marked the end of the road for some and the end of the fairy tale for others. On day three, the champs continued to fall. Jose Rosencrantz, Chris Caragoulian, Paul Darden, gone. Howard Lederer, gone. Gus Hansen, gone. We're running out of world champions. Lane Flack survived until day four, but all too soon, another golden ticket got punched. Lane Flack becomes our 10th place finisher. Whoever wins this tournament deserves to be called champion. But to outlast this remarkable field of players in maybe the toughest tournament ever, these six finalists are already winners. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more from the WPT Championship in Las Vegas right here on the World Poker Tour. Are you off your diet? Yes, I am. Welcome back to the WPT Championship at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. The action is just starting as all six players vie for the championship title and a prize pool worth almost three million in cash. We're back on the action. It's going to be on our man Ted Forrest to act first. And look at this, Mike. He's picked up an ace, eight of clubs. Now that's a strong hand for Ted Forrest. What's he going to do? He just calls. This is what we call limping in in first position. He has just called here. Now look at this. Allen's going up with an ace four. He's raising with just ace four. James Hepner's out of the hand. Doyle's going out. As is Phil. Now it's back to the young Russian. Now he's in the big blind. Remember, he has 30,000 in the pot. It cost him 60 more thousand to call. He knows that Ted Forrest has limped in in first position. This is a pretty much of a danger signal in the poker world. Many times people limp with a big hand. He's got queen ten of clubs, a pretty strong hand from the rookie from Red Square. What's he going to do? Look at the intensity on this kid. You know what? He looks a little like that movie star Matt Damon, you know, from Rounders. Hey, I think he looks a lot like Matt Damon. He's not going to play this, though. He's back on Ted. He's got to see this raise. What's he going to do? Well, that's 60,000, Tim. To call, he only has an ace eight, remember? 60,000 to Ted. But it's ace eight suited. Well, it's strong of a hand for him so far. I raised 300. Oh, man, look at this. <laughs> look at this. Whoa. He's going He's up. He's raising 300,000 with an ace eight. Against the chip leader, Vince. Oh, and Allen's going to throw his hand away. What a tremendous play by Ted Forrest. Well, how did Ted know that? That Allen wasn't that strong, that he could take this play? I mean, you don't know for sure, but saying $300,000 raise says a lot. <laughs> well, the strongest part of Ted Forrest's play, in my opinion, is his instincts for the game. Mike, you can throw the poker books away. This is poker mastery you're watching here. It really is fantastic. Back into action is going to be on James Hepner. And look at this. James has picked up a strong pair of jacks. 
He has not played a hands yet today. Well, he certainly is the most solid player at the table, as we say, the tightest player. He will have a hand if he gets his chips in there, and he's picked one up here, two oh, jacks. Yeah, you got to like that very much. Look, he's getting ready. He's going to raise it. He's raised it 100,000. He makes it 130,000 to go. Doyle throws away 6-4. Phil throws away 7-8. Whoa, look at this now. Oh, man. The Russian has picked up a pair of kings. Monster hand. This could spell disaster for the young CPA. With two kings, he's got to feel like a cosmonaut right now on the rocket ship here. Well, there's only one hand better than that. Look at this. He's taking his time with the... he got to think he's going to raise this up strong. He is raising. Oh, man, the red square rumbler is going to raise it strong. Now, look at James Hepner. Well, James has raised 100,000. And now let's see how much Kirill's going to raise it. He makes it 250,000, so he raises another 120,000. Ted Forrest, 7 8. He's not going to play. Allen's going to throw away his hand. Now, what do you do? You're an accountant, you're a CPA, you want to play, you have a pair of jacks. Well, you know, it's a pretty good hand. It's the only hand he's seen so far. But he is in the cooker here right now. He's in the frying pan, I can tell you. With the two jacks against the two kings, he doesn't know it, however. He bets it all. He's going to go all in. James Hepner has moved all in. Quirrell is going to quickly call him here. He's turning over his hand. He's not going to like it when he sees the young Russian's hand. James has two red jacks. Carol has two Oh, he's red not. Jacks. He just flew it over. There it is. Oh, man. James knocks the table. He knows he's got to really get lucky to win this pot now. This is two kings versus two jacks. Here comes a flop. That's not going to help him so far, Mike. Nope. Flop is a six deuce. Right now, James Hepner is going to have to have a jack or he's going to be our sixth place finisher. Here comes fourth street. Four Not there turn. either. Nope. He has two outs, as we say, left. Uh, he has to catch one or two jacks. It's over. He doesn't do it. James Hepner is our sixth-place finisher here today. A nice effort, a tough beat. He's got to walk away. This is a man that just a few weeks ago found out about this tournament, decided to split the entry with a buddy, and there he is, taking away $93,000. Well, he's told these other guys he's going to be sitting in the front row. Whoever wins that million, come over and see him. He'll show up what to do with their taxes there, man. Oh, oh, what a great effort. And I'll tell you something. The kid from Red Square is a man that is on a run. I love the intensity of this guy. Solid hand. Played it well. This guy's an amazing story. He got in with a $180 entry into a small tournament, won that, and he has a shot at over a million dollars here. I started playing the tournament uh, one, one year ago, and uh, I have a great chance for winning a million dollars. One million dollars to the winner, and the action is going to be on the young Russian, Kirill. And Kirill's got a king six of hearts. What's he going to do? He just won with kings. He's not going to play this one. He falls. Ted Forrest got three queen. But look at this. Ted Forrest again raising the pot. He's just going up. He's going to raise it. I mean, this guy just has his foot stuck. The pedal to the metal here, this guy. I mean, he never stops betting, Ted. Now, look at this. He's, Alan's going to call him with Alan ace six. Well, Alan calls. He's in position. He calls with ace high. He's got ace six. Now, look at this, though. Doyle Brunson's picked up queen jack of clubs. A very interesting hand. Well, that's a nice playable hand, and Doyle is going to play it. Yes, he is. Calling from the small blind. He calls another 50,000. Phil with king deuce off suit. He's not going to play. So we're going to have three-way action pot here between Ted, Allen, and Doyle. Got over a quarter million in the pot. This is going to be interesting. Yes, we're going to see some poker. We're going to see a flop. Here it is. Flop comes four. Now the four flop deuce. is four, four flop. deuce with two clubs. Now this gives Doyle Brunson a flush draw. Now see if you can t pick up any tells on the master. But he's Doyle going all in. all in. He says, I'm all in. Doyle is betting the flush draw right here, right now. 
This man has not lost any of his nerve, I'll tell you that much. Ted's going to go out. As and is no Allen, he's going to take the pot home. Doyle Brunson says, let's hear it. Let's hear it for me. Let me get back in the hunt here. This is a legend at work here. Lots of music to his ears. But this guy, it almost seems like he invented the big bluff. I mean, he showed people the way in his book. And now everyone knows that tactic. You've seen it on the World Poker Tour. And you just saw it there again by the master himself. Doyle Brunson is a Hall of Famer and a card room legend. Earlier today, I had a chance to speak to the man who literally wrote the book on poker. If you want to find out about a true legend, who better to ask than the people who follow in his footsteps? Doyle Brunson, grandfather of poker. He's been playing at a high level longer than anybody. Definitely, without question, one of the best players ever to play. It's a privilege to be playing with a guy like that. He may be legendary, but this is no mythological character we're talking about here. Texas Dolly, as he is known, is just a man who stacks his chips one pile at a time. I taught myself, actually. I was an athlete in college, and I broke my leg, and I couldn't compete in sports any longer, so I uh, started playing poker. And he's been doing pretty well for himself as a pro player ever since. 48 years and counting. It's really amazing, you know, from where I came from. I, we used to play in the back rooms in Texas and Oklahoma and Louisiana. You know, you always played you were going to get arrested, you were going to get robbed, you were going to get cheated. And now it's uh, in the casino atmosphere. I guess it's just going to get bigger and bigger. From cash games to mega tournaments, Doyle Texas Dolly Brunson has seen it all. And though he's had to change his style since letting his secrets out of the bag in his book, Doyle does have one piece of advice for the young up-and-comers. There's no substitute for experience. And I think that's the whole secret to poker. You know, Doyle is such like a legend in the poker world. It's just so great to see him here at this final table, Vince. We'll be back with more from the WPT Championship in Las Vegas on the World Poker Tour. Las Vegas and the WPT Championship. So far, taxman James Hepner has busted out in sixth place, going all in with a pair of jacks against Russian rookie Kirill Garasimov's pair of kings. Our current chip leader is still Alan Gehring. Although he's gone down today, he is truly the heartbreak kid. I mean, he has never won the tournament, as great as he is. Well, that's true. He's the only player at the table that's never won a poker tournament. But who knows, this might be his day today, and what a time to capture your first victory. I can tell you one thing, they all fear him because they can never put him on a hand. You know, he's an aggressive, gambling, bold player. You never know what the guy has. Well, look what he's just doing here. He's got 8-4 of spades. He calls, he comes in the pot, toils out, fills out, and the young Russian... With King-9 is going to call it. Ted's also going to be in. Here comes the flop. So here we go. And look at this. The young Russian is checking his pair of kings. He's hit the kings. He's setting up Allen, who's going to bet this. Notice the kid checked two kings in first position, knowing the two aggressive players are behind him, and one of them's liable to bet, and that's exactly what's happened. Oh, but he's going to quickly raise. The Russian is quickly raising him. This is a nice play by Correll right here. He knows how aggressive these players are. He threw them the rope, as we say. The old check and raise. He's and sure enough, Allen's going to hang himself here. Total of Ted is pointing, I don't know, what an insect on the... Table, who knows? He's gonna go out. This is 240. Two more tips. It doesn't matter. Let's go. And, Alan and Alan's gonna go out. Alan, Alan folds. I like that play by Carrell right there, I'll tell you, Vince. Uh, I like the fact he checked the top pair on the flop, knowing one of these aggressive players might bet at the pot. That's exactly what happened. Give him credit for the way he played that hand. 
Look at his smile, just like Matt Damon. Look at him. I think he does look a little like Matt Damon. Matt Damon played in the World Championship of Poker. Ironically, Doyle Brunson broke him. Doyle had two aces. Matt Damon had two kings. That's how he got knocked out of the World Championship the year he played well, it. Well, Doyle's going to throw a 10-8. Phil Ivey looks at an eight queen of hearts, and he's going to raise it up, Mike. Queen eight suited. Phil Ivey raises. Comes in for 90,000. The young Russian looks at a king deuce off suit. $60,000 raise. He's on the button in position. But with only a king deuce off suit. But look at him staring back at Phil. He's not going to call it. He folds. Ted Forrest got a 7 6 suited connector. Interesting little creative hand, potentially. You What's think, he going to do with it? I think Ted would love a hand like that. Not this time. Well, notice Ted the difference. Ted will bet the junk hands, but he won't call with those kind of hands. Now, this is amazing. Alan calls 60,000. Alan Gary's going to call with just 5 4 off suit. Well, he's had 30,000 in the pot. He calls 60 more thousand with a 4 or 5. He's going to try to catch a flop where he might can break Phil Ivey. Here Let's see what happens. Jack, 10, 6, with two diamonds. Now that helps neither player, but it gives Phil Ivey an Alan inside checks. straight draw. Allen checks to him. Allen checks, and here comes Phil. He's betting. Now, Vince, many players here would take a free card off to no, try to catch this thousand. nine. Not Phil Ivey. He's firing out of this pot to try to win it right here. Doesn't want to try to draw anything, and it's working. No, Allen not. folds his hand. This is a nice play by Phil Ivey right here. Look at a smile by Allen. Realizing huh? he's just, he was just messing around with you, Phil. He bet with the queen high, the inside straight draw. He won that pot. He didn't know his opponent had a 5-4. A bold, aggressive play by Phil Ivey. You got to like it. He's going after this title. Lots of stake. This is a sensational young player. You got to have a lot of heart to play no limit poker on a championship level. And Phil Ivey certainly has it. Got to go with your first instinct in poker, and you got to follow through. Okay, it's going to be on the young Russian Kirill. And this time he's picked up King Queen Mike. Yeah, that's a nice hand. He's not going to play it. Now, that's pretty amazing in the five handed game to lay down a King Queen, but he did so. Ted's going to lay down six Queen. Now, Alan's going to call us with a five deuce of clubs. A <laughs> five deuce, he calls. He's in position. It is suited. Now, Doyle's already involved. He got Queen five. He calls in the small blind, and we're going to have a three way pot here. Here it comes. This is Doyle, Phil, and Allen in this pot, and the flop 10, comes 10-8-4. Helps n none of the players. Phil checks. Phil checks. No Alan help checks. to anybody, and it goes check, check, check. It comes 4th Street. Next card is the Deuce of Diamonds. Now the Deuce of Diamonds comes off on the turn. Now that hits two players here. It hits Phil and Allen with a little piece of that. Doyle checks. Doyle checks. It's a nice card for Phil because it also gives him a diamond draw. He has four diamonds and a pair of deuces, and he's going to bet. He bets 100000 He certainly is. Now, Allen's got a... Now, Allen's got a five deuces. deuce black cards. Not much of a hand when a guy bets 100000 in front of him, but look at this. Total. He's raising it up. Vance, this guy is betting $300,000. Doyle's out. With the deuce five of clubs Doyle's here. There's a lot of guts here. And Phil's going to go out. Phil lays it down. Now, notice Phil had the better hand yeah. and the better draw both in this pot. This Yet, pot. because of the $300,000 bet by Allen, Phil laid it down. What a great, bold, aggressive play by Allen Gearing right there. He's got a little smile there. He knows he pushed the great Phil Ivey around. Taking that pot, he's got to love this. I play the game not so much for the money involved, but for the entertainment value and the fun. It's unwise, uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes it pays off. And right now, let's give a chip count here, Vince. Alan Gehring, still our chip leader. He's got 2,150,000 in chips. In second chip position is Kirill from Russia. Phil Ivey's right behind him. Then comes Doyle Brunson with about 660, and last with about 330,000 is Ted Forrest. Doyle Brunson, he's got 410 off suit. He's not going to play. Phil's got Jack four. He's not going to play this hand. Now here's Carrillo. He's got a king queen, a nice hand on the button in position. Now remember the last hand he folded king queen in first position. Yes, he did. This time he's in late position on the button, perfect position, and he is going to raise it. That's right. A nice strong raise by Carrillo. Comes in for sixty thousand. But look at this. 
Ted Forrest, the junk man, bets on anything, has a pair of eights. And that's a monster for Ted Forrest. Well, it sure is. And what Ted is contemplating now is whether he's just going to call the 60000 or whether he's going to raise it. Keep in mind, Vince, the next guy that goes out gets 120000 If you win, you get over a million dollars. There is a lot of pressure here. Look at Ted's lining up here. Well, when he takes his chips off the top like that, you know, he's counting up how many chips he has. This generally indicates an all-in bet. Now, we've seen him play with nothing before. He's going to go all in. He is in, all in. Ted Force has moved all in with his 2 H. You can't blame him right here for doing that. Allen's think. going out. And the Russian's going to quickly call it. Look at this. All right. Turn him up, please, gentlemen. And now Ted Ted's shakes his head. Now he's got to like that a little bit. He's going to be a slight favorite, Ted Forrest. Well, right now, Ted's about a 53% favorite to win this pot. It's like a coin flip, as we say. It's a race situation. It's a pair against two over cards. Ted has the two eights. The Russian has the king queen. Here comes a flop. Whoa. There's the flop, and Ted's going to be in front so far. Well, it's ace, jack, three of diamonds, Vince. Now, what this means is Correll can catch a king, a queen, a ten, a diamond. He has a lot of cards he can win this pot with. Okay, we're going to go away for one second. Stay with us. We'll be right back on the World Poker Tour. The soles of my feet separated from the, from the bottoms of my feet. It took me like two weeks to even feel halfway human after that. Welcome back to Bellagio. We are watching the rookie from Red Square go against Ted Forrest. What's going to happen here? We've seen the flop. Well, I'll tell you right now, Ted Forrest is holding his breath. If he loses this pot, he's out of this tournament. He's got a pair of eights. He's up against a flush draw, a straight draw, and two over cards. Here comes 4th Street, Mike. Can he hold him off? Okay, the seven's not going to help him. Ted's still in front. Ted knows he's got to dodge a lot of bullets here. Can he do it? Last card, the cash card. Let's see what it is. Yes! Oh! Ted Forrest has dodged all those bullets. He clapped for himself. This is over a $700,000 pot. He is back in this match. Oh, yeah. Nice holdup for Ted Forrest, the man. gambling man. Well, he knows how many cards Carrillo had to win that pot. Ted was lucky to hold him off. He has doubled up, and he is back in the match here. When you lose a million, you're like that skier that just falls off the jump. And when you win a million, you feel like you just won a gold medal. And we're going to rock on. It's going to be on the young Russian this time to act first. This time he's going to 10-3, Mike, off suit. He's going to fold, catch his breath from that last hand. Yeah. Now Ted Forrest has picked up nine queen. Look at this. You give him some chips, bang, he's right back in the pot again. Alan Gehring with an eight deuce of clubs is also going to call. Doyle Brunson's got an ace deuce, and he's also going to call it. And Phil Ivey with an ace three is also going to call. Now look at this. We've got four-way action here. Amazing. Four out of the last five players in the tournament are playing the same pot. Here's the flop. And the queen hit Ted Forrest. Well, the flop comes. Queen 10-4. And Ted's going to bet it. Ted bets 50,000. Ted bets 50,000. Allen's got, got four to the flush. Throw. Yeah, he's got a flush draw. And he calls the 50,000. Doyle's going out. As is Phil. Okay, so we lost half the players. We're down to two now. Ted and Allen. Remember, Ted has a top pair. Allen has a flush draw. Here comes 4th Street. Flush doesn't get there yet. Now the 4th card pairs 10s. Now Ted checks this time. Yes, he does. And look at this. Allen's going to bite here. He's going to bet it. Well, this is amazing. Most players will try to get the free card off of there, but not this guy. He bets 100000 with this flush draw. That's a pretty strong bet. Ted's quickly going to call this, though. Well, Ted makes a nice call here. Ted has the top pair, still has the best hand. Here comes the last card. River of Dreams, we call it. 
What's it going to be? Four well, the board pairs fours. The flush doesn't get there. And we know Ted's in front with the two pair queens and tens. How is he going to play it? It checks. Now, Alan did not get there. He's got nothing. Well, the only way he can win this pot is to bluff at Look it. Look at this, and he's going to do it, Mike. 200,000. Oh, I love it. He has bet 200,000 right here with nothing. A stone bluff. Oh. And now look at Ted Forrest. He is faced with a decision now. He has the top pair, but notice what happened here. The second card paired, and then the third card paired. So if Alan called him with either one of those pairs, Alan would now have a full house. This is what Ted's going through Ted's mind. Well, we know that he has him B. Ted has queens and tens. But obviously he doesn't know that. I bet he's wishing that he would have bet out because Alan would have probably gone away. Look at Ted. His hands are clenching. He's counting how many chips he has. That's what he's looking at now, that if he calls and loses, how much will he have left? Look at Ted stunning as Alan sits back in his chair. I'll tell you, this is fun to watch because this is really a decision to make here. Now he's trying Look to get how he's Alan. His he's trying to get a reaction out of Alan. He needs some help. And he's getting him to talk. He did get him to talk. Now that's interesting. And look at Alan's getting cocky. He's looking back at him. Well, I tell you, most guys, when they bluff, they can't even speak. You can't even draw it back, as they say in golf. But it doesn't seem to be bothering Alan any. He doesn't mind this little banner, I don't think. What do you think I should do? Should I call or fold? <laughs> Look at this. I'd like to help you, Ted. I'm involved in a hand right now. Alan says I'd help you, but I'm involved in a hand right now. This is cat and mouse time here. I could give you some advice, but I'm conflicted. Two phonies going at it, trying to pretend like they have a real conversation. Look at this. <laughs> Whoa, Alan's chat has done him well oh. because Ted laid the hand down. He has earned this pot by making another bold bet at the river, 200,000. What play you are watching here on the World Poker Tour? Just incredible poker we're watching here today. Well, it's going to be back on Ted to act first. He looks at his hand. He's got 10-7 off suit. He's not going to play this time. Going to catch his breath. Alan's got a 6-4 this time. He is also not going to call back on Doyle Brunson. This man hardly ever looks at his cards. He is constantly observing the other players and everything around. The Godfather's going to raise it. He's seen the rest of them get in there raising their pot. He's going to try it. <laughs> Phil's going out. Now, Phil folds. Now, Correll picks up Queen Jack offsuit in the big blind. Doyle has made it 90000 to go. Look at all this. in. He's going. He says, I'm all in. <laughs> he says, you may have wrote the book, and you may be the godfather, but here, try some of this. Oh, Bang. Look at that, showing no respect to the godfather. <laughs> Unbelievable play right there by Correll. Doyle's thinking right now, I stuck a jab out there at this guy, and he knocked me down. Doyle Brunson, the godfather of poker, probably asking himself, why the heck did I write that book? <laughs> Down to five players. They've been playing for five days. Action's going to be on Allen. And look at this, Mike. He's picked up a pair of jacks. Well, this time he has a real hand, two jacks. And he comes in for 60000 Now, this is the minimum raise possible, remember. The big blind is 30000 So if you raise it, you have to make at least 60000 Doyle Brunson's got a queen eight. He's thinking about it this time. What is he thinking about? He's all in. He's going all in with this. Doyle Brunson sensed weakness on Allen's part. He's made a misread here. He's moved all in for all his chips. Phil has gone out. It's on the young Russian who has seven queen. He's not going to call. But look at this action going on here. And now it's up to Ted Forrest. Now he looks down and finds an ace-jack offsuit. Yes, he does. Now one guy has raised. Another guy has moved all in for over a half a million in chips. What is Ted thinking about here? Well, that doesn't phase Ted. This guy wins or loses life savings on a regular basis. This guy loves the action. Well, he plays a lot of poker with Doyle Brunson, so I'm sure he feels like he can read Doyle as well as anybody. This is the godfather of poker. You have respect for this man. He comes in over the top, all in. How is Ted even thinking about this? Well, even if Ted thinks he has Doyle beat, which he may think, 
you still got a man that raised it in first position over there. That's true. Sitting on your left, who is the chip leader. So there's more for Ted to worry about than just Doyle here. You know, I think Doyle saw all these young bucks pushing it around so strong, he figures it's his turn. Is it going to pay off here? I'm all in. Unbelievable. What? Unbelievable. Ted Ted's going. Forrest has gone all in. <laughs> oh. And now look at Allen. Oh. Well, well, Allen's got a real hand. Head. He's got the pair of jacks. He's got the two jacks, but now two guys have moved in for over a half a million dollars a piece on him. Unbelievable. Now, Doyle know he's been picked off. He got his hand caught in the cookie jar for sure, and he knows he's doomed. I call. Oh. And he calls, too. Oh, my golly, look at this, Vince. We've got three-way action here over a million-and-a-half-dollar pot. And look at this. Doyle look at just Doyle. laughing it up. Well, he's chuckling because Doyle has been picked off. Both these guys call this hand amazing. I'm stunned here. Doyle has a queen eight. Ted has an ace jack. If Ted or Doyle lose, they're out. Allen has two jacks. He could knock out these two sensational legends of poker in one blow. We got three-way action here. I, lots of excitement. The flop about to come up. Stay tuned. We'll be right back on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to Bellagio on the World Poker Tour. We are in the middle of one of the most exciting hands we've seen on the World Poker Tour to date. Well, you're not kidding. Doyle was bluffing for all his money with a queen eight. Ted opted to call and go all in over the top of him with an ace jack. And then Allen with two jacks has called them both down here. It's three-way action. And if Doyle or Ted lose this pot, they're gone. Let's watch the flop. Here's the action. So far, so good for Allen. He's in front with a pair of jacks. Six five three, no help to anybody. This could knock out two players if it doesn't happen on the fifth street. Doyle's going to have to catch a queen, or Ted's going to have to catch an ace, or they're going to be gone, Vince. Here comes the cash card. She turns and still stays now there. Now deuce comes off. Now if a four comes off, it would be a three-way chop, a three-way split pot, because they'd all have a straight six. Otherwise, Doyle has to have a queen, or Ted has to have an ace, or they're both going to be gone, Vince. Here comes the river card, the river of dreams, the cash card. It's all on the line. What's it going to be? Bang, it's not. Alan Gehring wins over a million and a half dollar pot here and knocks out the godfather and Ted Forrest in one blow. Two superstar players going to be eliminated. I wonder if Allen realizes he just he just whacked the Godfather of poker. I'm telling you, the crowd is stunned right now, Vince. They are absolutely stunned. Look at the class. Doyle Brunson walking away. He's going to finish fourth for that effort. He's going to pick up 159,000. And a great player, Ted Forrest, just standing over the table. Doesn't want to leave, Mike. Notice Kirill, the Russian, got up and went clear around the table to shake hands with Doyle. I know it's an honor for him to play with Doyle, as it is all these players. I can tell you right now, this hand is going to be talked about for a long time to come in poker circles. Well, I think Ted's feet are glued to the floor. He can't leave. He's just still looking at chips and mumbling to himself. Ted Forrest, who didn't have anything involved in that pot, moved all in with an ace jack over the top of Doyle. Just astounding play, astounding poker right there. That's a hand that's going to be analyzed for a long time to come. Well, Mike, we're down to three players here. And look at the three diverse characters we have here. We have a successful businessman whose hobby is poker in Allen with the big chip lead. We have a foreign player, a young guy, Corell from Russia who got in this tournament on a $180 satellite. And then we have the top professional player, Phil Ivey. What a mix and match that we have on the World Poker Tour of players. There is a lot at stake. We're down to three players here. Well, look at this bet by Allen with a 4-6 offsuit. He's going up, and Phil is going out. But the young Russians picked up king-queen. Well, this is a good hand in a three-handed game. And he's just going to call it with a king-queen. Well, it's another minimum raise made. The hand he got killed with with the eights earlier on, but he's hit the queen here. Flop comes queen nine nine. He's setting a trap. He's checked, and Allen's betting. 
I was bad he calls. Carol says call. Alan's got to be sick about that. Here comes 4th Street. Next card is a king. Now a king comes Three, off. Nine, Carell nine. checks again. With this time Alan checks right behind him. With two okay. big pair now. He's definitely trying to sand trap here. Last card, seven. Now the seven of hearts comes off. Now Carell has kings and queens and he's going to bet. Yes, he, he is. That's 100,000. Alan just smiles and throws away his abysmal hand. Carol bets about 100000 And Carell shows his hand here. Yeah. To me, I think that's a mistake, Vince. You know I don't like this play at all, especially playing for this championship against these two tough guys. One's got all the chips. Show them nothing, I say. Wait till they see the TV show to see these hands. I think he just wanted to give the crowd a thrill there. If I was him, I wouldn't give these two guys any information whatsoever. I certainly wouldn't be showing them my cards after I made a bet and they didn't call me. Okay. Back in action. Three players at Bellagio on Phil Ivey first. He's picked up ace four. Phil Ivey, a sensation the last couple of years in poker. Has won numerous tournaments, millions of dollars. Here goes Phil. He's going to raise. Comes in for 90000 Phil brings it in for 90000 Russian Rumbler. What's he going to do? He's got 8-4 offsuit. Oh, yeah. I think he's playing very disciplined, very smart. Gambles at the right times. I like the way this kid plays. He's going to go out. Alan Gary's got a king and a deuce. And he's going to call this. King deuce of spades. He calls. We're going to see a flop. Alan has king deuce. Phil has ace four. Here it comes. Comes ace, eight, ace eight, deuce. deuce. Alan has checked Alan the checks. bottom pair. He made two okay. deuces and checked, and Phil checked right behind him. Yeah, Phil's got the aces, but he's playing this Queen. slow. Queen doesn't help on 4th Street. Alan checks. Alan he gets checks. checked. To, he's going to check it again. Well, I think you need to make a bet here now. Let's four. We'll come out to play Phil because he just hit two pair. Aces and fours. Alan checks. Well, he's not going to check a third time. He's got aces up. <laughs> Now his opponent's never going to put him on aces up here because he's checked all the way down through this hand. But he bets 140000 Looks like about 150000 When you talk about deception, he mixes his play up so well. He's actually got Alan thinking about this with just a pair of deuces. Well, the guy's checked the hand all the way down to the end. It's unlikely he's going to bet with just two fours on the end. You'd think if that was all you had, you'd just check it out. That's what Alan's thinking about right now. Are these two deuces good? Phil Ivey is taking this poker world by storm. His wife is in the audience watching him here today compete for this championship. He'd love to take this pot right now. I know he really fancies his chances to win this tournament right now, even though Alan has a lot more chips than he does. I'm sure he feels more experienced and feels like he's a better player than Alan. What does Phil Ivey have? No, he folds. Alan folds. Phil wins this It's a spot. nice lay down by Allen. Can't think of he would it's fall. A very nice lay down by Allen. I'm real surprised Phil didn't bet that hand on 4th Street. Okay, action is going to be on Kirill this time. Kirill has picked up a monster. Look at this. He's got Ace King. That is a superstar hand. Look at this. Not only sit in his seat. And it's suited. Big slick, as we say. Carol brings it Comes in, in for 100000 100, Now, Alan's got 6-3. This guy is truly a junk man. He has called 100000 right here. <laughs> Phil has gone all in, and, we'll and Correll quickly and calls him, call. and Alan quickly folds his oh. hand. Look at this. Phil's got ace queen. Ace queen Whoa. For this is ace king for Kirill. Ace, ace queen for Phil Carol. Ivey. This could lead. be ace devastating for Phil Ivey. Oh. Let's. Right now, it's got to be haunting to him. If you'll remember back at Foxwoods when he played against Howard Letter, he moved all in with ace queen. Howard had two kings. Here comes the flop. Oh, no, Mike. The king comes up. Phil is in big trouble now. He's got to catch a jack and a ten or two running queens or he's going to be our third place finisher. He's getting up, getting ready. Whoa. Here comes 4th Street. He doesn't do it. It's yes. over. It is over for Phil. It's over for Phil. He's going to be a third place finisher. Kirill, ecstatic, raises his arm in triumph. Once again, the ace queen came back to haunt him just like it did at Foxwoods. And he is stunned. Well, he's stunned, but I'll tell you. Phil opted to move all in with ace queen. I don't fold him at all for making that play. 
Unfortunate for him, Kirill had a big hand at Ace Can Clubs, and he ended up getting knocked out in third place. Nothing to be ashamed of. That's the right play. Just unfortunate. Very unfortunate. He ran into a big hand. Ace Queen is a hex for Phil Ivey. As a classy Phil Ivey shakes hands, has to say goodbye. Third place finisher Phil Ivey picking up $253,000. To the WPT Championship. So far, CPA James Hepner filed early, but finished in sixth place after a poorly timed preemptive strike against rising Russian star Kirill Garazimov. Alan Gehring then found himself in a dual battle with ultimate cash game player Ted Forrest and Hall of Famer Doyle Brunson as the two made a simultaneous play for the pot. But only Allen walked away accounts intact as Ted landed in fifth place, Doyle in fourth. Finally, three-time WPT finalist Phil Ivey made his move, going all in against Kirill, but found first place to be out of reach again. Now, back to the action as international heads-up champ Kirill Garasimov and three-time second-place tournament finisher Alan Gehring go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, as only one will walk away with the championship title and over a million in cash. I am pleased to present Antonio, magician for the World Poker Tour. A magician can make an ace appear from his sleeve but only the WPT champion can turn 52 cards into a million dollars. Whoa, there it is. He found Shauna and she's got a million dollars man. Just that quick. That's an amazing trick. <laughs> the cash over a million dollars on the table. Yeah. Remember, the runner-up in this tournament is going to get over a half million dollars, and the winner is going to get over a million dollars, plus they're going to be a legend in the poker world forever. That's true. One of these two guys is going to do it. Will it be Kirill Jarosimov from Moscow, or will it be Alan Gehring from Henderson, Nevada? And here we go. Here's the action. Right now, I think both of these guys are so elated to be down to the final two players and so elated that these mega superstars of poker are all gone. They're on the rail. Phil Ivey, Ted Forrest, Dora Brunson, gone. Out of here. And I know both of them are very happy about it. They're both confident. They both think they can win. All right, it's going to be on Allen first, and he's picked up a monster, Mike, pair of kings. Whoa, two kings, heads up. Oh. And he just calls. He's setting that trap you like to say so much about, Vince. Oh, I'll say. Now, notice Kirill didn't raise him back with an ace high, whereas most players would have. That's really nice for Allen. He's got his kings and sevens. Kirill checks. Kirill checks. Alan really sandbagging here. Goes check, check. And another Sorry, seven. Another now seven. this gives Alan a full house. Seven's full of kings. Kirill checks. Kirill checks, and Alan's going to bet 50,000 this time. 50, a very 000. small bet. Well, this time he's going to come out and play. He's had it with that slow playing. Kirill looks like he's going to bite. Phil, he's got to think the ace high is good here. Alan's got to be so excited. He's got a full house. Sevens full of kings. It's a huge oh, hand. It calls 50,000. He's got his sucker on the ropes. Oh, man. Oh, four, seven. Four, seven four seven comes seven out here. Out now, yep. this has actually made Kirill the winner with the ace. He has the very best hand possible you could have. Four sevens with the ace kicker here. Oh, this is scary. What a horrible card for Alan. Alan is taking a horrible beat right here. And look at this. Kirill's lining up to bet it. He has a cinch. He has four sevens with an ace kicker, ladies and gentlemen. Well, he's bet 200,000. And now what happens is, instead of having two kings right now, Allen only has one king. He can only play one of those cards because he's going to play the four sevens on the board. You're right. His best hand is four sevens with a king kicker. It's no longer a full house. Now that's so pretty interesting. Your hand can shrink from two kings down to one. 
Look at this. Alan, this is the worst thing that can happen to you in a poker game. He's going to call a two out of aggravation. Well, he knows the only card he can lose to is an ace. Oh. And there it is. Kirill shows, shows it to him. I'll tell you one thing. Alan's kicking himself saying, why did I play this so slow in the beginning? I'm not going to show that hand. In fact, I'd like to rip it up and put it into a toilet at the Bellagio quickly. <laughs> well, you're right about that. He slow played himself into oblivion. There comes seven, 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 seven. And the ace that played for Kirill ironed out the king that played for Alan. Well, Mike, the price of poker is going up. The blinds are now twenty-five and fifty thousand dollars. Blinds once again are force bets. You have to put it in before you get to look at your cards. Well, you're right, but there's five and a half million dollars worth of chips in play. So even though they're twenty-five and fifty thousand blinds, Vance, plenty of time to play. Here we go. It's gonna be on Allen. He's got King Seven here. He calls. He limps in on the button. Kirill this time has seven six. This guy. Goes to show you almost have to play anything because anything can happen in Hold'em Poker. Well, he can take a free flop here or he can raise. And he's just going to call it. He opts to see the free flop and here it comes. Oh, well, that doesn't help either player. Ace 10 8, actually an inside straight draw for the Russian. It gives Kirill a draw at a 10 high straight if a 9 would come off. And here's Allen betting with King High, 50,000. 50, well, he doesn't want to make the same mistake he did last time. He wants to bet his hand this time. Now, that amazes me. Correll was called 50,000 to try to catch a nine. Here's Fourth Street. Turn cards another eight. Not yet. Now the board pairs eights. Ace, 10, eight, eight, two spades. And look at this. He's going to bet it, Mike. Going to pretend like he has it already. This is amazing. And now he's going to make Alan think. He's put 150,000 here with absolutely nothing. And look at this. Alan is calling with a king high. He must think it's good. He does think it's good. I think he does think it's good. Now, this is what poker is all about. And in fact, it is good. Let's see if the kid can catch it straight. He's not going to do it. A four comes off. It's a spade, making a flush possibility out there. The now, Kirill has absolutely nothing. Whoa. He moves all in, He's going to go all in. Oh, He's bet over $2 million on a stone bluff, and it works. <laughs> Allen lays his hand down. That's a brilliant bluff. What are you worried about him, Vince? He has got game, as they say. Mm -hmm. What a great play, Mike, by the young Russian. Give this kid credit, Vince. The last pot, we saw him catch lightning. Yeah. This time, he totally earned that pot by betting on a stone bluff right there. Great poker by Corell in that hand right there for bluffing his way to victory. You know what I love about Allen is his attitude. He loses a hand. He gets that little smile. He understands poker, and he takes his lumps. He's a great competitor. You can just tell that. Well, but right now, he's got to feel like there's a crack in the dam. Everything is going Kirill's way so far in this heads-up match. We are at the WPT Championship at Bellagio with a million dollars on the line. Only the finest poker action on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to the action in Las Vegas at the WPT Championship. We're down to two as Russian heads-up champ Kirill Gerasimov and ex-junk bond trader Alan Gehring battle for the title and over a million in cash. I love these two guys. They are going eyeball to eyeball. You look at the young Russian. This guy has proven us all wrong. Well, I'm sure he likes his chances now because, Vince, his specialty is playing heads up. Yes, it is. He is not intimidated. This is his game. Heads up poker. Big money at stake here. Look at all that money on the table, Vince. That's what they're playing for. The bracelet, prestige, glory, historical moment in the poker world. Will be first Whoever wins the this title. It's going to be on Kirill to act first. He's got 6-4 off suit. And he wants to play. 
He just limps in and calls. 25,000 more from the button. 25,000 more to call. He does so. Alan's got 7-5 off suit. Kind of a pathetic little hand. But he's raising this pot. 100,000 out of position with a 7-5 off suit. Bold playing right here by Alan Gehring. I'd say they're both feeling the Wheaties right now. And, and now Kirill calls with a 6-4 offsuit. Here we go. Let's see the flop. Flop comes ace-7 tray. With well, Alan's off. picked up the pair. Well, he made two seven, so he leads out in bets. Kirill's got the inside straight draw. Yes, he does. That means a five would give him the very best hand possible at this time. This guy likes to bet strong these kind of hands, and he's lining up, getting ready, aim, and, and firing. Calls. And he does. He calls $100,000 on a straight draw. Can he get lucky? We're going to see 4th Street. Now the Jack of Diamonds comes off. Doesn't help him. Alan's going to Alan check checks. it. Now Alan has two sevens and he checked. He's just giving the play to the young Russian. He's reaching for chips, Vance. Look at this. Unbelievable. Well, he's a bold player. Look at him. Here's Kirill. Most people will be thrilled to get a free draw at this. Not this kid. He's betting 300000 with absolutely nothing here. Got to admire his guts. He has put the test to Allen right now. 300000 Now, poor Allen's just over there with a 7 and a 5. He's only got a pair of 7s, and it's a $300,000 bet to him. Oh, Alan is sick about that. He's saying, why did you bet into me, my little Nikita? Look at this. Alan is calling this bet. Yes, he is. He has called him with two sevens. What a great call right here by Alan with just two sevens. An amazing call. And now the kid's got to feel like he's back in the stew pot again. He might have got himself in here a little too deep, but we do have a last card. Now the million-dollar pot. Can he pull out the Moscow miracle once again? That card would be the five. That's the miracle card here. Can he catch it? Last card, queen of hearts. No, it's a queen. No, no luck. Alan quickly knocks the table. Oh, he's going all in. All in. Correll has moved all in on another stone bluff. And Alan quickly folds his hand. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Unbelievable. Unbelievable watching this kid move in with nothing time and time again. You know what's amazing, Mike, is that this guy knew in his mind, no matter what hit the board, he was going to say those two words, all in. Unless Kirill has shown the poker world here that he does have chops, this guy can play. <laughs> I'll tell you, he, he sure got him, that's for sure. It's incredible. Kirill Gerasimov, I'm from Moscow, Russia. He may be one of the fastest rising stars of the poker world, but 32-year-old Kirill Gerasimov has a secret. He's also a Russian agent. Before I have insurance, insurance company, its manager. It's now a semi-professional poker player. Insurance agent by day, heads up champ by night. Having only learned poker 18 months ago, Kirill has definitely become a comrade to be reckoned with. Kirill, very tight, solid player. He's another type of player that'll sit and wait for a good hand. This is the first time I've played against him. He, he was a very strong player. So just how did this young superstar in the making turn from agent to poker whiz virtually overnight? I play good, yeah. He may be as hot as Matt Damon in Rounders, but Agent Gerasimov still has one nemesis to overcome, Bond. Well, retired Wall Street Bond trader Alan Gehring, with his giant mountain of chips and super ability to confuse with his erratic style. So just what does Kirill have to say about his mission today? I believe I win. Well, Vince Carell is now taking a commanding $2 million chip lead over Allen. And you know Allen's got to be feeling a little dizzy right now. It's going to be on Carell to act first. He's got 9-6 of clubs this time, Mike. And he's going to call this. From the button, which is the small blind Let's position. stop the press. Picks Look at up. this. Allen Gehring's picked up a pair of ladies, a pair of queens. Allen's going to raise it. 
And Allen raises it 50,000 more. Yes, he does. He's got to be excited about this. Over 100,000. Now, this is a relatively small raise here, so it does make you scratch your head if you're Corral. Doesn't like to fold too many hands. Underneath, Allen has got to be so excited, trying to hide his trembling. Well, right now, he's got to try to stop the tidal wave that's running over. Corral has been playing a lot of different hands. Getting lucky with him, mixing it up beautifully. He's going to call this. We're going to see the flop, Mike. All right, here we go. The beach put 100,000 in there. Here comes the flop. Flop is queen Ooh, five Queen trade. five three. A pure dream for Allen right here. He's flopped the top set the best hand possible. Oh, he's got three the queen. monster, and look at him. He's trying to keep his composure. Three of a kind. How's he going to play it? He's going to play checks. it slow. It's gone check. He's trying to trap the young Russian into betting. Look at this slow play. Carrell and Carell checks. checks behind him. Yes, he does. We've seen fourth Much street. Much to the disappointment of Allen, I can tell you. That pairs the boards. That makes Allen even better. A full boat with queens full. Queens full of fives. How's he going to play it this time? Now, this is amazing. Most people would check in one second with the top full house, but not Allen. He's betting 100000 right here. All right, he's kicked away the rat trap. He's going to make a little bet. I'm a full says all I'm in. Kirill says I'm all in. He's only got a six and a nine. A stone bluff one more time. What a disaster for Kirill. But this time he has stubbed his toe. Look at Allen. He's looking down there. Do I really have Queens full here? I call. Oh, he and made him sweat it for a called. second. Okay. Oh, my Let's golly. Up, please. Oh, it's a six and a nine. And look at Kirill's Kirill. face. Oh, queens man. Stone, stone bluff queens. for Kirill right Allen. here. So Devastating blow for Kirill. Wow. He has called the all -in bet. Let's go ahead. Now, this is the first leak in the Let's dam for Kirill in my mind. We'll Look right. at his teacher right here. He's wondering what is going on. My kid Queen just took a $2 million dollar chip lead, okay. and now he's bluffed off all his money to where his opponent now has a big chip lead over him count, once again. What is he up. thinking? And Alan's just saying, thank you, my little Nikita. I really <laughs> appreciate that. Wow. Why is he bluffing at this stage? Yeah, point, He's got the match in total point, command point, right now. Five. He doesn't have to make these plays anymore. If Correll doesn't win this tournament, he's going to have nightmares about that hand for the next 50 years, believe me. Well, we could talk results all day, you know, but it did work a couple times earlier. It was brilliant, but it definitely hurts him there. That's going to sting. And we are back into action. It's going to be on Correll. Let's see if he can compose himself and get himself back into this match. Well, he looks down at his hand, picks up jack six of diamonds. Yes, he does. Not much of a hand. He's going to need some help. But he wants to stay involved. He's going to call this. Real calls 25,000 from He's just trying to line. swallow right now. I can't hardly do it. He keeps drinking his water there. Allen's picked up ace eight. Pretty strong hand here. What's he going to do with it? Well, he hasn't been raising with an ace high before. Now he's starting to do it. He raises it just 50,000. Total of 100,000. Yeah, Very nice, sneak. small little bet. Keep drinking that water. It's free. He might be spiking that water very shortly. He right. calls it. He is going to call. He's got the jack six of diamonds. Gets ace eight. Here comes the flop. Flop comes jack, six, five. Oh, man, this is beautiful for the kid. He's just flopped two pair. Dream flop for Correll right here. Jack, six, five. He's flopped the top two pair. Oh, how to contain that joy. Allen checks it into him. And the kid's going to go bet it. He's not checking. He's betting 100,000. 100,000. He is not checking this hand. He's betting the top two pair right here, 100,000. And he's hoping his man dials on in. Allen's got ace eight. Not too much of a hand. What is he thinking about? Jeez, he's getting stubborn. <laughs> you know, even if he thinks ace high is the best hand, you know, you're still going to have to fade two more bets on fourth and fifth street. Fourth card is a ten. And that ten's not going to help him either. Allen checks. He's checking, and Kirill's now taking another drink of water. Guy's turning into a camel out here. 
after that tough beat. Now it's two clubs, two spades on the board. Kirill has two pair. And Kirill's going to do another acting job. But here comes the stacking. He's bet 320,000. And look at Allen, stiff as a statue. Has nothing, just ace high. I'll tell you what he's saying. Why did I call that 100,000 on the flop? That's true. He's going to fold it. Kirill wins this pot. And Kirill picks up the pot. And I think he needed that little momentum booster after the air went out of his sails, after he bluffed his money off the pot before that. Plenty more action to come on the World Poker Tour. Las Vegas and the World Poker Tour Championship. Russian rookie Kirill Gerasimov continues to fire away at Wall Street's Alan Gehring, hoping his stock will rise again. And the lead is seesawed back and forth between these two. Right now, Alan's taking a million dollar chip lead, Vince. He certainly has, and he totally deserves it. He has made it happen. Very deliberate player. A lot of nerve. It's crunch time here, Vince. There's no doubt about it. These guys are feeling the pressure. They know what's at stake here. Well, there's a lot at stake for the young Russian. Don't forget, 180 bucks you get in this tournament, you have a shot at winning over a million. It's phenomenal. Okay, it's going to be on Allen again. Allen takes a look at a 5-8 offsuit. He's coming in. Well, he's in position. Remember, there's 75,000 in the pot. It cost him only 25,000 more to call. Kirill. So he calls with a 5-8. Kirill's got an equally bad hand, a 7-3 offsuit. Very junky hand, and he checks. We're going to see a flop. Here we go. Jack Deuce Trey. Kirill Top check. comes Jack Deuce Trey. Now, Kirill had two threes, and he checked. A lot of checking going on here, but that eight's going to hit Allen this time. And Allen caught an eight on the turn to make two eights. Allen bets 50,000. Allen bets 50,000, and now it's up to Kirill. Kirill thinking about it. Well, Kirill has just a pair of threes. Well, Kirill doesn't believe him. He's going to call it. He calls him. He thinks the two threes is the best hand right here. Last card coming up. Now the board pairs eights. Oh, man, that makes three of a kind for Allen. Kirill checks. Allen's going to like this. He's got to love it. He's betting 200,000. Now that's a nice big bet right here. And it's put Corell in a little quandary. Now he called on 4th Street because he thought the two threes were the best hand. When the board paired eights, it doesn't look like the eight hurt him. So if he thought they were the best hand on 4th Street, he probably thinks they're the best hand now. He's in a dilemma. You're right. He's got a little bit of a decision here. Well, this is very interesting. He's going to call it. Look at this. He is calling 200,000. He's not going to like it. No, he's not going to like this. Alan, Alan turns, turns up the three eights and wins the pot. What a nice $200,000 bet by Alan at the river. Oh, man, and the heads-up European champion does not like that. He thought he was making a nice, smooth call. Does well, not pay off for him. I mean, what a swing that was. Carell ended up losing 250000 more. Had he bet on the flop, he might have won the pot, won the 200000 that was out there. It's like a $450,000 swing there yeah. because he checked the flop and then called him all the way down. Now look at Alan Gary. He's wondering, can I do it today? <laughs> this guy has never won a poker tournament, Vince. He's finished runner-up in some majors like a Phil Mickelson, but he has never won a poker tournament. Well, he's got the lucky sunglasses on, so maybe he will turn things around today. Originally hailing from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, New York, Los Angeles, and Las Vegas transplant, Alan Gehring created a lucrative life for himself out of junk. 
I worked on Wall Street as a junk bond analyst. I did a little trading also. I would analyze the junkiest of junk bonds, which are called distressed securities. But Wall Street's brand of gambling wasn't enough for this successful trader. So after 10 years, Alan picked up the pieces of his wealthy life and retired, moving to where the real action is, Las Vegas. One of the reasons I played poker is I thought it would help me with my job. The distressed securities world, there's, uh, it's a little bit like poker, so it's uh, the risk reward payoffs a lot of times are the same thought process. His theory may work on the floor of the stock exchange, but does it stack up against cunning players at the poker table? Alan was very off the wall. He total maniac. And he took every chip from Paul Darden in two key hands. Just crazy bluffs that only he could pull off. I was there. It was just shocking. But one man's shock is another man's crazy. So with such an awesome chip lead but unpredictable approach, how does Alan feel about his odds in this tournament? I've never won a poker tournament in my life, but I have come in, in second place three times. I keep getting close. One hand and one card can make such a big difference. And with that hand, Alan takes a two million chip lead. He now has three million eight hundred thousand, as opposed to Corell's one million eight hundred thousand. Two to one chip lead. Right back at him. It's going to be on Corell. He's got to be a little upset about that last hand. He's got ace king, big slick this time. Just calls. He limps in on the button. He's trying to feign weakness here. Oh, yeah, you're right. He just calls. Jeez. Alan's got queen nine of spades. Alan doesn't raise with the queen nine of spades. We're going to see a flop. Now, the flop is king, queen, deuce. King, oh, man, deuce. this could be spelling disaster for one of these guys. Well, Both of them picked up big pairs. Alan has two queens. Corell has two kings. Alan checks, and here comes Corell. He bets 100,000. Yes, he does. Alan's going to quickly call. Alan's in a canoe headed upstream right now, looks like. He calls 100,000. Here comes 4th Street. He needs some luck. Now the board pairs deuces. Alan checks. Alan checks. Oh, Kirill has the two kings. Alan has the two queens. Kirill's got him where he wants him. Another check by Correll. And Correll checks two kings. Very mysterious there to me. Ace comes up on the last card. This gives Correll aces and kings. But it's a danger card if you're sitting in Allen's seat. He checks. Allen checks. Now Correll's going for his chips. He's made the top two pair, aces and kings. How to play it. Correll bets 200,000. Correll bets 200,000. Now that ace actually could have helped Allen because that's another card that it could be beaten with. That's a good he point. He might be that's... able to throw the hand away. Yeah, it's a scare card out there for yeah. him now. He can lose if he had a jack-10. He loses if he had any kind of ace. Now it's a pretty easy hand to get away from, actually, the two queens. I'm really sort of surprised that Carell did not bet this hand on 4th Street. And Allen does oh, get away from this hand. A nice lay down by Allen Gehring right there. <laughs> He's not going to call it. Kirill's going to take this pot. Well, had Kirill bet that hand on 4th Street, who knows? He might have won a very big pot. Plenty more to come. You're watching the WPT Championship from the Bellagio in Las Vegas here on the World Poker Tour. Bellagio at the WPT Championship. The tides have turned as the Wall Street Warrior regains the market share of chips. But the Moscow Marvel continues to put up a solid fight for the title and the million dollar plus jackpot. Here we go. It's going to be on Alan Gehring once again. And this time he's picked up 8-7 off suit. 
and he raises it up 50,000. He loves to make oh, it 100,000 to go. That's the minimum raise possible is 50,000, but he does it all the time, so his opponent never knows what he has. Now, Kirill's got king six of hearts, and he's thinking about... you got to know that he's going to call this at least... Well, there's 150,000 out there, cost him 50,000 more to call. Question is, does he want to raise or does he just want to call and see a flop? Kirill calls. He just calls. We're going to have a flop. Here we go again. Flop is ace-10-5 with two diamonds. Kirill that helps neither player. Kirill quickly checks. And he gives the choice to Allen, who's no. going to bet this. He has absolutely nothing, folks. He has 8-7 offsuit. Taking a stab at the bluff here. But he's firing out 120,000. Now it's Correll. Now what is he thinking about here, Vince? He has a king six here. Well, there's only two options I can see, or to throw his hand away or to raise. I can't see how he can possibly call this bet. You know, the bad thing is he makes you sweat out every bluff. He's yeah, finally going to throw it away. Spot. He does torture you. He does. He puts you on the rack for sure. Well, Vance, we are watching some great heads-up action between these two players. I love these two guys. They are going eyeball to eyeball. Shade to shade. Yes. And here we go. Can the Gotham Gambler hold off the Red Square Rumbler? They knocked out 109 great players. And here we go. It's going to be on Allen first to act. He's got 5'10 of clubs. Here comes Allen. He's calls 50, calling with the 5'10 of clubs. Kirill's got a seven king. And he knocks the table. We're going to have a flop. The flop is seven, four, five, five, four. Seven, which means Kirill has flopped the top pair with two sevens. Allen has the second pair with two fives. This is very dangerous for Allen. Kirill likes it. He's going to bet here. He leads out and bets 100,000. Allen's got a piece of it. Allen calls him. Allen calls 100,000. So it's two sevens for Correll, two fives for Allen. And Four, a six comes five, off. Six, now, this seven, is a dangerous card that's going to scare both players, I predict. Well, you're right. Neither one has a straight, but it looks like you could have fallen into that. So you're right. Correll checks. Let's see if Allen has the guts to bet this one. Is he going to represent the straight? That's the question. He sees his Russian friend checking into him. He's really contemplating this. But he's not going to do it. He checks. Last card. The last card is a deuce. No apparent help to anybody. Correll checks. And he's... Allen says and two Allen fives. says two fives. Correll turns Allen's up the two sevens seven. and wins the pot. Now, that's very interesting. We've seen about three or four hands like this. A couple soft hands. The momentum of this game has changed into a totally different mood. Well, that's just like a championship fight. You never know what's going to happen. You can get knocked out in the first 30 seconds of a fight, or it can go 15 rounds. This looks like it has the potential of a 15-rounder here to me. They are pushing each other around, staring each other down. you got to love this. St. Petersburg, that What's well, on Allen? He's got Jack Queen this time. Finally, a decent hand for these guys. A little smile, and he's going to... Just call it. Just calls this time. He's yeah. been raising every single time. He's finally got a decent hand. He just calls. Uh, Kirill's got king four. And these Kirill guys checks. are both playing soft. They're going to see another flop. Here we go. Whoa, king, flop queen, comes. Jack king, also. queen, jack. Kirill has flopped the top pair, two kings. Oh, man. His opponent, however, has flopped queens and jacks, oh, two pairs. Oh, yeah, he's got to love that. Show tunes going off in your head. Six and he's got to bet it. Now, Kirill has checked. Allen has bet 60,000. And Kirill's got top pair. King, this could be a monster oh, hand here for both players. Who's going to come out on top? Here comes 4th Street. 4th Street is a 10. That's a very dangerous card for both players because it looks like a straight could be made. And it goes check, check. You're right. It slowed them down. And the last card, an ace on the board. That makes a straight on the board. Now, Kirill checks here. Oh, bad for and Allen. Allen checks. They're going to split this pot. Oh, look how discouraged Allen looks. He had him trapped. He had two pair. He could have broken the young Russian. Well, there's the ace, queen, ten of hearts on the board. He should have moved in right there to try to win that pot. That's got to be discouraging.
We are in the thick of it at the WPT Championship from Bellagio in Las Vegas here on the World Poker Tour. Don't go away. The exciting conclusion of the World Poker Tour Championship at Bellagio in Las Vegas. I'm Mike Sexton along with Vince Van Patten. Well, Mike, things are heating up here. We are watching some great heads-up action between these two players. Two guys that you wouldn't think belonged here. Down the stretch, they go. Million dollars at stake for his price. This could be Allen's lucky day. He's feeling better. Old momentum has come back to his side now. He's got nearly $4 million in chips. His opponent has about 1.6 million. Well, he's still hanging in there, the young Russian. And this time it's going to be on Allen again. He's got 7-9 off suit. He's going to call it. He just calls. And Kirill has a 4-5 off suit. And he knocks the table. We're going to see a flop. 4-5 versus 7-9. Here we go. King 7-6. Flop comes King 7-6. Now look at that. Allen's got the pair, and Carell has an open-ended straight draw. Yes, he does. Carell checks, and here comes Allen. He's bet 50000 Slopping around with the pair of sevens. He's going to bet it. Will Carell do the same thing? He just calls. Carrell he does calls. not opt to raise with this hand. He just calls it, trying to catch a card. Jack now the jack the comes off on the turn. And that does not help the young Russian. He's checking. He and checks, so and Allen, Allen checks. Now the deuce of diamonds comes off at the end. Helps neither player again. No help to either player. Corral checks. So it's just like a give up play for Corral there when he checks. Now does Allen just check it? Take the pot? Or do you want to make a nice value bet? Well, he's got two sevens. If he thinks it's the best hand, he might make a small value bet. Looks like he is. There he goes. You're right. He's bet 90,000. 90, King Jack, 7 6 deuce. Oh, don't tell me. What's he going to He's raising well, Vince. He is raising this pot with nothing. He is a 5 high. Well, that's sometimes why you don't make a value bet. He's being raised back $200,000, Mike. Oh. An amazing play right here by Correll, and really? this is really going to put Allen to the test. And look at Allen's calling it. He doesn't even hesitate. He called him, and well, Correll quickly his mucks his hand. He called top. with the two sevens. It was a tremendous call. A $200,000 raise. What a play right there by Alan Gehring. <laughs> Folks, there's two overcards out there, and he called a $200,000 raise there. He went with his instincts, Vince. It's like golf. I say trust your swing. In poker, you got to trust your instincts. He bet at the river because he thought he had the best hand. He called the raise for the same reason. Great job by trusting your instincts right there by Alan Gehring. Gotham Gambler going down the stretch, opening up his lead. We are watching tremendous poker here. It's going to be on Kirill this time. And this time he's got 8-6 off suit. He's going to call it. Allen looks at his hand. He's got an 8-5. Two abysmal hands, but he's going to call it. We're going to see another flop. Whoa, the flop is 8-5-4. Oh, that's tremendous. Eight, five, now, what four, this means is Correll has the top pair with a straight draw, and but Allen, Allen has the top dollars. two pair. And he swings away. He's going to bet this. And look at this. Correll on tilt here, playing on the third rail, is going to raise it. Allen bet 50000 Correll has raised it to 300000 I'm all in. Echo. Allen's going all in with his two pair. And Corral quickly calls him. He takes off the sunglasses. He's going to be sick when he sees this. Corral has the top pair with an inside straight draw. This could be it, ladies and gentlemen. Eights and fives. For Corral to win this pot and stay alive in this tournament, he has to catch a six or a seven right now. Here he comes. Gehring's got the lead. 
Turn card to seven. To seven oh, comes off. Oh, oh, look at Allen. Oh, devastation. Right now, Can you Carell's believe this three. is happening to him? A horrendous outdraw so down. far for the Russian. Now, he can still catch an eight or five to win it, but right now he is dismal. This would be amazing. Last card. An eight. An eight. He does it. Look at Allen. He's clapping. He's skipping. Look at this. Allen has won this championship. Look at that. Oh, you got to love it for Allen. I'm telling you, that was heartbreak for him when that seven came off of their vents. It is over, Alan Gehring. Whoa, what a match, what a battle, and what a dramatic finishing hand this was, Vince. I have never seen anything like that. It's our last hand at Bellagio. Talk about a seesaw. Carell walking to the side. Vince, they'll be talking about this dramatic hand for the next 50 years oh, in the poker world, I'll tell you. His friend, his coach, is holding him up. I don't think he, his knees are a little wobbly. What a great effort. Well, I think player. Carell's feeling a little bit dismal right now. He's going to take home over half a million. He's smiling. Allen made a nice comeback and played sensational poker down the stretch to win this tournament. Now let's bring up our champion, Alan Gary. You've won the biggest poker tournament perhaps in history. You must be feeling fantastic. This is a, a unbelievable uh, tournament to, to win for the first time. Well, we congratulate you for that. We certainly want to thank our viewers for joining us this season, and we look forward to seeing you next season on the World Poker Tour. TV2 Zulu og Pokershop.dk præsenterede World Poker Tour. The crowd loves it. Yes, they do. Om lidt kommer det noget anderledes britiske comedy show. Kan du købes? Os. Skal ikke kigge for meget, så bliver jeg ondskabsfuld. Kan du køre dig lov til dit ægge der? Nej, det er ikke noget ind. Hvor holde? Kom. Hallo, vi følger. 